All right, y'all. So I had a question that I want to ask y'all. I'm taking control of the interview now. I had a question I want to ask you. What is the buzz? Okay, give you a second. And what does that translate into? The answer is power. And in most cases, when young black men in the entertainment business get power, what's the first thing that they want to go get? A deal. So really what I see, and I can't, I'm not criticizing because I did the same thing. That means that a black man with power doesn't feel like he can wield that power, wield and control that power. So he needs to go get him a white head so he can become a worker again. Because that's what we're comfortable with being. But I know that we're kings and I know that we're owners and we're gods and creators. We're also businessmen. So I think it's very important for us to control the images and those sounds. Because I tell people this all the time. Everybody think I'm on this kick. I want all positive music. I just think we need balance. And even if they are negative images, we should control those images. You know, the person that I have to give props to is Tech 9 That's true independence. I tell people all the time, I may not be the richest guy in the world, but I cut my checks. When my engineer finished working, he gets paid immediately in most cases. If you look at Walking With Gods and you, you watch the credits roll, I paid every one of those people. As soon as we got finished and everybody went, you know, cut, I sat down in front of the whole staff and people got in the line and I cut checks. They may only got paid $100 because I, I can't, that's why I always thank people. I can't pay people what they worth. But my mentor always told me free is too expensive. But at the end of the day, I am a true boss. Black folks always talk about, I'm a boss, I'm a boss, I'm a boss. If you got to send your workers to get a check from New York or LA, you not a fucking boss. If somebody can stop or somebody has to wait in order to get their money or for you to, you got to go and make a call in order for the lights to get turned on, that's not a boss. You know, when it pertains to music and, 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 and television, think about the God Box lecture series that's selling out all over the United States. Me and a young lady from, from, from Birmingham called Jasmine Kimball, like, watch how easy this is and watch how dope technology is. We go buy a building. We set up a system on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Make a couple of flies because I still think we should go hand to hand and touch the people. Go get Eventbrite. And with Eventbrite, the Ticketmaster is gone now. And create commerce and money. We got a young team out of Jackson, Mississippi that prints up our T-shirts. And then on the other side, Teespring does the rest of it. We're literally running a corporation with about five people. Like we're literally competing with, you know, people who are, have a million dollar budget to hire people and we cut it into their pockets. And I'm predicting something to you. In the next five to seven years, I am going to be a problem. Me and my team are really going to be a problem because the one thing that we're doing that these corporate companies can't do, we're touching the people. We back hand to hand. We feeling on folks. I'm hugging people. And our team, we're really getting down in there with folks. And you can't beat that. We're true owners. Um, one last thing Jasmine told me, she said, because this woman has a full-time job. She said, I came to work for you. She said, she, she wouldn't even let me pay her. I paid her anyway because nothing's free. But she said, I paid for you because you're one of the first black men that I ever saw that put his money behind what he believed in and uh, it's paying off. I realized something, um, especially looking at artists like Big Crit. In order for us to get a buzz anyway, we had to create our own opportunities. And then as soon as we get that power that I talked about earlier, then we give it over to somebody else that probably didn't see that vision because I even know, like when we first got signed in New York, most of the people in that building didn't like Southern music. We made them like Southern music. The only reason why they signed us because we were making so much money independently that they wanted to cut into that. For me, creating your own opportunities is a must because nobody cares about you as much as you do. And especially in rap, everybody rapping now. So, you know, why should I, why should I give you an opportunity when my little cousin Jimbo is rapping? You feel what I'm saying? Everybody is rapping. It's not an art anymore. It's a hustle. 
So for me, you have to create your own opportunities. I have buttons, stickers, whatever you want from David Banner. They got ladies, they got David Banner uh, underwear, uh, panties with my face turned this way. So when you put them on, you only see the back. Oh, that's just another aspect of it. We'll talk about that later. Nobody's going to do for you like you. And to be honest with you, you know, this level of my career, I honestly, I'm just being real with you. I honestly didn't think people were fucking with me like that. And what I figured out was I thought it was the promoter's responsibility to bring me to even my own city. But that's not the truth. The fans are waiting on me. And if the promoters don't see that vision, it's my responsibility. As a matter of fact, I don't even trip on promoters no more. It's not hard. Go rent your own building the same way you rent a car. It's that easy. Go rent you a building, put somebody that you trust at the door, preferably your mama, uh, with some security, and get that paper. It's not only a must, I think it is your responsibility to create your own situations, especially if you're a man. It's something different, you know what I mean, from what we used to seeing in the South. You know, they made Atlanta proud. They made the South proud. They wasn't following the trend. If I could talk to the young Ron Artest, I would tell him to stay out of the, the projects where you're not supposed to be at doing, you know, stuff that you're not supposed to be doing. I probably put my first verse in there, that's all. And like, he brought everybody who was in the studio in there to listen to it after I was done. Tyler, the creator, uh, Jeremiah, and I don't even think that he talked on anybody else's record besides mine's. So I had made sure that I got yams on the song. It was going to either be yams or Puff Daddy, and I got yams on there. 